Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is an early morning news report brought to you from Birmingham, Alabama. It's uh, Wednesday, August the 19th, and it's 7.48 a.m. Okay, last night when I was with the uh, Grafted in Team Jesus, um, what do they call that? It's a Google Hangouts is what we, we're on. We can all hear each other and see each other if we want. Okay. Well, the, Kathy showed a video of how New York, I don't know if any of y'all have heard this. I It may be in my email now that I haven't gotten to yet. But she showed a video of some guy driving down the streets of New York City. Now, they... Kathy and Dan live in Upper New York State. It's all country. Most of New York's country, except for New York City and Albany, which is smaller, of course, than New York City. That's the capital. Okay, but most of the state is country-like, you know? Well, anyway, so they live three hours away, but they've been to New York City, you know, to shop and stuff, and they were, like, flabbergasted it. How Saks Fifth Avenue, uh, the famous jewelry stores, banks, businesses they knew of were all boarded up. And nobody, I mean nobody, was walking around on the streets. And they said, Kathy said, when I first saw this, my jaw was on the ground because when they were there, there were so many people you couldn't go one block without passing or going through a thousand people. Well, we've seen that in movies, right? If you haven't ever been there, that's where I've seen it. Well, anyway, so I'm on uh, a place where you search for a channel. And I'm looking for that video because I didn't catch the name of who did it. Well, listen to these titles. Cuomo de Blasio have mixed feelings about exodus of New York's wealthy residents. They were talking about how, oh, they offered to throw them a barbecue if they would come back. That's what the man said. I thought, are you joking? Rich residents don't care anything about having a barbecue thrown for them. All right, this title, Why Millionaires Are Flocking to Florida from New York. Well, if they are, they're foolish. They don't really know what's going on, do they? New York City expected to lose more than $300 million from the wealthy fleeing city for low-tax havens. For low-tax havens, really? You think that's why they're leaving? Now, this one says, why is everyone leaving California? Well, I say it's about time, and I don't think everyone is, only those who have money. This one is New Yorkers leave city during pandemic, unsure of return. So they're blaming that one on the pandemic. This one is op-ed, opt, I'm not sure what that means, 800000 to leave New York in California over high taxes. Well, they're blaming that on high taxes. You think the rich people, the elite, the Illuminati, they don't know what's coming? Of course they do. The Navy has the map already drawn out. They already know that, see, they think they're the powers that be, but they know there's a higher power. His name is God Almighty Jehovah Elohim. And he is going to split this country wide open. And those two coastal lines are going to be overtaken with earthquakes and tsunamis. And they're going to fall into the, they're going to end up underwater. And they know it. This one says, why has everyone left New York City life during COVID-19 update? Oh, right. So they left because they're under COVID-19 rules. This one, New York City must lure residents back, Governor Cuomo says. New York City lost over $300 billion in one year. Well, I wonder why. Billion-dollar Seattle business leaving for Austin, Texas. 
here's why. All right. This one's about Seattle people even. Well, I would too after what they allowed. New York City's fleeing rich, the rich, will destroy the city and its poor, part two, Rudy Giuliani. See, you could watch every one of these and none of them are going to say because they know there's a nuke coming. Why are people... Why people, or earthquakes, whatever, devastation. Why people are fleeing New York, fastest shrinking state. This one, Cuomo blames Trump's tax reforms for New York's $28 billion deficit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Trump's fault. This one's called Top 10 Reasons People Are Leaving New York. This one, why is everyone leaving big cities forever? Well, you know, this, I'll just do one more. Proposed California wealth tax would impact millionaires even if they move. Hmm, and this one leaving California. Okay, so you get the idea. These people know. They know something. They may not know it all. They may not know what we know, but they know something. And they're fleeing, but not the poor. They don't have the money to get up and flee. But the other ones do. And I'm sure it's not because someone heard the prophecy about it. They See, Satan knows a whole lot of stuff. They know everything that's going on on YouTube, first of all. They're, they know everything we say. They go... The people who are the radicals, you know, the fundamentalist Christians, the the political dissidents, the ones that don't go along with what they want, uh, they know everything we say. And whether they believe there's nukes or earthquakes coming, they know something's going to happen. Because, you know why? Because they have it planned. The Illuminati has it planned. They want to destroy America as much as God does. Probably less. Probably God is so fed up with us. Us as the U.S. I don't know. I, I think God probably has them beat in that department, don't you? The sin, the debauchery, pedophilia. They know they're going down. And where are they flocking to? I don't think they're going to Florida. I think they're going underground. So my goodness, we are seeing mass exoduses of the rich leaving their townhomes, their businesses. They are, oh, they were so all boarded up. It looked like a ghost town. It was absolutely unbelievable. Saks Fifth Avenue, on Fifth Avenue. I mean, it really was eerie. But we know what's coming. We know. And those dumbs, those deep underground military bases and their fancy bunkers they got built down there. If you ever saw the Jesse Ventura video on the deep underground military bases and the bunkers man i'll tell you what some of them are decked out they look like sunlight's coming in the lighting they have built in down there and some of them are just small like like say you're a wealthy family but you're not rich rich but you were able to afford something down there they're like bunk beds more like a a ship, like being down in a ship. Can you imagine being down there for a couple of years? It's not going to even work. The earthquakes and the in flooding waters are going to get them. They need Jesus, don't they? Amen, hallelujah. We all need Jesus. If you don't know Jesus today, you need to turn over your life to him completely. Nothing else is going to save you. Nothing. No other being no other person, no other higher power. There is no other but God Almighty. He sent His Son Jesus to die for us. 
Can you even imagine the Son of God leaving his royal estate in heaven to come down here? He allowed himself to be made into a baby to grow up like us so we could he could experience all the things kids go through and young adults go through, all the temptations, all the everything. Yet he passed every test and remained perfect and spotless. And he became the perfect spotless lamb so he could be the perfect sacrifice on Passover when the lambs are sacrificed. Oh, it is so mind-blowing if you really think about it. How a man, not man, he's all man, all God. Let himself be ripped to shreds, mocked and tortured and spit upon, slapped, and then ripped to shreds. Then had a crown of thorns beat down onto his head. Then he had to drag that cross, which he was so weak he had to have help with, because he was all man. He felt every bit of it. And allowed himself to be hung on a cross, can you imagine those sticks, spikes being pounded into your... Oh, I had a shot in one of my arms right about with somewhere in my wrist area. And I nearly kicked the doctor under the table. I didn't mean to. It was just involuntary. It hurts so bad. This area is so painful. And imagine having your feet put on top of the other and and the spike going through both. After your arms are pulled out of their sockets, you're already in so much pain and hardly breathing and then you get spikes drove through your feet. Y'all, he did that for us. He did that for us. <coughs> so that all you had to do is believe... <coughs> Confess your sins. Repent from them. Jasper. Jasper. Come here now. Sit. Stop that barking. Stop. Shh. This is very important. Yes, you have to do something. Yes, it takes more than belief. That belief, that word belief means to commit to. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. That's John 3, 16. That word believe means more than believe because even the demons and Satan believe in Jesus. So take that to the bank while they're still open. It means you believe to the point where you, it hits your heart and you understand what he did for you to the point where you want to commit your life to him. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Two commandments he gave us. He fulfilled the law when he died on the cross. He fulfilled it. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. He gave us two commandments that encompass the others. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself, which includes everybody, even the unlovable, even the people who have hurt you. And we must forgive if we want to be forgiven. We must walk the straight and narrow road. You have to. If you want to be living off in the world and playing church on Sunday, which I don't know how people are doing that now. I don't know if many churches are open some are online. Some people are meeting in homes. I don't know. I believe probably most of it is online. If the churches have any kind of money at all, they're able to set up something online. But the point is, 
It's time to quit playing church. Quit playing the game of Christianity and be one. Love people like you love yourself. Like Jesus said, Whatsoever you do unto the least of thy brethren, that you do unto me. So if you ignore needs of others and you can do something about it, even pray. You can do something. Do it. But don't use just praying as an excuse if you've got money to help. Oh, there's so many things. I didn't even mean to get off on a sermon. I was just going to show you how people were leaving New York. The end is here, people. You're running out of time. You need to confess your sins. I pray nobody, nobody is still in the once saved, always saved campaign. That's a lie from the devil. You are not saved until you're there. That is when you get your salvation. You get... You're, you're born again. You get the, you become a new creation in Christ. Okay, for if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away. Or the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. But that new man can allow sin to creep back in and he can fall away. You see, that is what the parable of the sower of the seeds is all about. There was a sower who sowed seeds, some on rocky ground, some on dry ground, some on uh, some took root, but the uh, the ground was shallow, so when the sun came up, tribulations, they withered and died. These are all Christians, well, except for maybe the ones where when the seed fell on stony soil, the birds came and ate them. They ate the seeds. In other words, Satan came along, and st or the demons, and convinced them that they weren't really... Christians or whatever, you know what I'm saying, it never took root, the word never took root, and then some, it took root, and grew some, until the heat scorched it, and they, they fell away, they died, they were no longer Christians, that can happen, you are not saved, until you get there, so walk the straight and narrow. Follow Jesus. You got to be a follower of Jesus. You got to obey the gospel and everything, even that Paul taught. You don't want a religious spirit. Don't tell everybody else, oh, you got to stop doing this. You better stop doing that. Jesus said, Judge not, lest you be judged. For with what measure you judge, it shall be measured unto you. But first, Get the log out of your own eye, and then you can see fit to help someone else get the splinter out of theirs. He didn't say we couldn't judge at all. He's saying clean up your own act, and then you can help others clean up theirs. We're, we're supposed to mature into that position. Do you understand? It doesn't mean we can't ever tell somebody, look, you don't need to be doing that. You need to do, you know, just stop doing that and it's it's not godly or whatever. I hope you get my point. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit just took over and started speaking, I reckon, because I sure didn't have a sermon planned. But people are fleeing the cities. The end is near. Know it and be praying be getting closer to Jesus, be cleaning up your act, make sure you're ready for the first round, the first rapture, the first fruits taking away, whatever you want to call it. Not many will go. You know why? Most people won't watch YouTube videos. You could send them this video and they'll go, oh, that's nuts. There's not two raptures. See, a lot of people won't believe it. 
but there are. The small part goes first. Then the Antichrist comes on the scene. We come back. We help the rest. We harvest the wheat. And then the multitude, too large to number, appears in heaven. Revelation 7, 9-17. That multitude is too large to number. That is the rest of the church and anyone else who accepts Jesus as their personal Savior. Now when the, the ones who get beheaded for Jesus... Uh, see, I, I think it's after that. But it may be, it may happen some before, but because the dead in Christ will rise, and then we who are alive and remain, and that word remain means have survived. That part is a, a Rennie Helder did a good study on the dead in Christ. I'm just going to briefly mention it. He said, you can go to his channel and find the teaching. Rennie Helder. He put a link in, in one of my comments. That's how I know about it. I went and watched it. He proposes that the dead in Christ could be those of us who have crucified the flesh. And he shows it in Hebrew and everything. The dead in Christ, those who crucified flesh and have been walking with Jesus, will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain. And then could mean a day later, a week later, a month later, 40 days later. And then is, is a very open word. It doesn't specify a period of time. It means at some point later, we who are alive and remain will meet the Lord in the air. You, those who are alive and have survived whatever happens after the first rapture. So that's very possible that that scripture backs up what I've been saying. And others, many others, many others have gotten this too, not just me. I'm not, a lot of people have gotten dreams and visions coming back in their uh, a type of armor or in a glorified body or they didn't even realize it was different but they were helping people and nobody could seem to see them they were just helping people and feeding them and preaching to them and they could see the evil entities or or some would see uh, like soldiers and they would just pass them by like they didn't even see them See what I'm talking about? These these were dreams and visions people got. So a lot of people have gotten this. And didn't even realize what they were looking at. That we were back down here on earth helping to harvest the wheat. So whether you're in the first harvest or the second harvest. Know this. You have blessed hope. Jesus has the perfect plans. So... There, if your loved ones are not ready, don't you worry. You just keep praying that the Lord will let them live so you can come back and convince them. See, look, I'm in my glorified body and phew, you are healed and whatever. We'll be healing, raising from the dead, feeding the multitudes like Jesus did, and so much more. I can't even fathom what all great exploits will do. With that, I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over the internet connection, over myself and my computer, and over each and every single one of you that's heard this. I pray that every single one of you will be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And I plead the blood of Jesus over your devices and your internet connections so we can stay connected until we're out of here. Okay, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.